Over Ray Lewis's career, he played with many great defensive teammates. If one was to think on who they were, the first names that would come to mind would probably be Ed Reed, Terrell Suggs, maybe in the modern era, Haloti Nada, to some extent, Peter Boulware, Chris McAllister, Samare Roll. But there's one guy who doesn't get as much credit in that category simply because he didn't play with Ray Lewis for all that long. It was actually only a couple of years. But they were very fruitful years, as this particular defensive player joined the Ravens in time for their 2000 Super Bowl run and was arguably the second best player on that defense. At the very least, he was in the top three or four. Rod Woodson, one of the greatest defensive backs in NFL history. He started out as a cornerback, eventually moved to safety, and he excelled at both positions. So, let's take a look at Rod Woodson's career and try to figure out how it stacks up to the great Ray Lewis. Rod Woodson, let's take a look at his career statistics. 17 seasons played, 238 games, 1,050 tackles, 942 of them solo, 13 and a half sacks, 20 forced fumbles, 32 fumble recoveries, 137 fumble return yards, one fumble return for a touchdown. His real claim to fame, statistically at least, was his work as an interceptor of passes. 71 interceptions puts him near the top of the list, and his 1,483 interception return yards put him at the top of the list until very recently when the great Ed Reed passed him. So, very few people returned interceptions like Rod Woodson. 12 interceptions returned for a touchdown still is a NFL record. 169 passes defended, total approximate value of 193, and if you weight that out, it's 140, very strong numbers. And you can see, average season, 14 games, 62 tackles, 55 solo, uh, 8 sacks, <coughs> I mean, I'm sorry, 80% chance of a sack, uh, 1.2 forced fumbles, 2 fumble recoveries, 8 fumble return yards, um, four interceptions, 87 interception return yards, 70% chance of an interception return for a touchdown, which is very high for a play of that significance, um, 10 passes defended, and an approximate value of 11. So we see a cornerback slash safety here who was capable of making routine plays like normal tackling, but also made a lot of big plays, game-changing plays. And you can look at his average game, four tackles, four of them solo, percentages, 30% chance of an interception, and a 70% chance of a pass defended, which is um, very high. I, I mean, obviously, he is a defensive back, but for anybody, those numbers are very impressive. Now we get to his career playoff statistics, and there's certainly at least one thing here that's a little troubling, so let's just take a look at it. He made the playoffs 10 times in his career, played a grand total of 20 games, both very respectable totals, 100 tackles, 80 of them solo, solid for a safety slash cornerback, but only one career interception in 20 playoff games. For a guy who made his bones as an interceptor of passes in this league, somebody who could make big plays, game-changing plays on defense by forcing a turnover, that's certainly a little troubling, and you can also see eight passes defended. So it seems like his play, especially in regards to his abilities to be a playmaker, tailed off a little bit in the playoffs. You can see average game for him, five tackles, 40% chance of a pass deflection, 5% chance of an interception. They just don't stack up well with what he did in his regular seasons. So we'll definitely have to factor that in as we get down the road, but if you look at his statistics, I think the playoff performances certainly give Ray Lewis a significant edge here. All right, team success. It's pretty solid here as well. Over 17 seasons in the games that Rod Woodson played, his teams won 137 times and lost 104 times. This gives him a 57 winning percentage. Pretty solid. Stacks up nicely with Ray Lewis. Team playoff success, over 10 playoff appearances, 11 wins and 9 losses for a 55 winning percentage. 
pretty much what you would expect from somebody who made the playoffs so much. Solid numbers. All right, let's cut to some defensive ranks for Rod Woodson. How good were his defenses? Well, let's start off with looking at points. Um, Rod Woodson was on the number one defense once in 2000, of course. And he was on a top five defense in terms of points seven times. Throw in all the times he was on a top ten defense, add it all up. He was on a top ten defense twelve times leaving just five seasons kicking around closer to the bottom of the league. You can see him down there. So his defenses were certainly better than average, and he was on quite a few very good ones. And his average defensive rank is 10th. Ray Lewis was 9th, so it's pretty easy to make a comparison here that both are very much in the same neighborhood, but Ray Lewis gets a small edge here. <clears throat> now, yards. Much of the same stuff. Um... Rod Woodson was on the number one defense twice. He was on a top five defense nine times, more than half of his seasons. That seems to be a bit of a trend with these guys. And actually, other than those nine seasons, he was on a defense that was not in the top ten. You can look down there. He was actually on some pretty poor defenses at certain points in his career. So even though he starts off very strong, as you can see, he was actually a top three defense um, nine times. It all averages out to an average rank of 10th. Again, in the same ballpark as Ray Lewis, actually pretty much right there next to him, but Ray Lewis holds a small edge there. Career accolades on the part of Rod Woodson include 11 Pro Bowls, six-time first-team All-Pro, two-time second-team All-Pro, on first team all conference seven times, two times second team all conference participant, one time NFL Defensive Player of the Year in 1993, and a three time AFC champion, each time with a different team. Although it should be said in 1995 he barely played because of injury, and he only won one Super Bowl of those three tries, which was of course in 2000. Now, if you look at some of his leaderboard positions, they're pretty powerful. The third most interceptions in NFL history, second most interception return yards in NFL history, as I said earlier, second only to Ed Reed, the most interceptions returned for a touchdown in NFL history, and his fumble recoveries, 32 of them, is the record for a non-quarterback in NFL history. <coughs> Obviously, quarterbacks have a big leg up there, but... Take them out of the equa equation, nobody was better at falling on fumbles than Rod Woodson. In terms of approximate value, his ranking is 13 among all players who ever played in the NFL, and if you weight that value, it is 14. So certainly very strong performances for Rod Woodson there. Peak season. Rod Woodson was at the peak of his powers as a Pittsburgh Steeler in 1993. 95 tackles, 2 sacks, 2 forced fumbles, a fumble recovery, 8 interceptions, 138 interception return yards, and a pick 6. 23 passes defended, which is a very high number for anybody, and an approximate value of 17. <clears throat> Average game, you can look at the percentages, uh, 6 tackles, 50% chance he was going to get a pick, and 1.4 passes defended per game. Very strong pass defense numbers. He got in and made tackles doing the dirty work. Just a very solid all-around season from one of the greatest defensive backs ever. The defense he was on, the 1993 Steelers, gave up an average of 17.6 points a game, good for eighth in the league, and they were number three in yards, 283. Maybe not completely dominant, but very strong, one of the best in the league. But when you get to the postseason, well, the Steelers didn't make it that far that year, so I believe he only only actually played in one game, amassing five tackles in a game where the Steelers gave up 27 points and 401 yards. So, not exactly the greatest end to Rod Woodson's greatest individual season, but a very impressive season nonetheless. Finally, Rod Woodson's best career games. We'll start with his rookie season, 1987, November 22nd, at the Cincinnati Bengals, division rival. His first career pick six comes on an interception return 45 yards in a 30-16 victory. 1992, half a decade into the future, 
September 6th at the Houston Oilers. He has two interceptions, returns him for a total of 73 yards in a 29-24 victory. And then you jump forward a full decade, and we go to a game he played against the Tennessee Titans when he was a member of the Oakland Raiders. September 29th, three interceptions. As an old man at this point, might I remind you, 100 inter interception return yards and a pick six in a dominating 52-25 to victory last time the Raiders were really worth talking about, and that's probably the greatest game of Rod Woodson's career. Now we look at his postseason games. I mentioned earlier Rod Woodson not the greatest postseason player, so here's what we got. 1995, January 15th versus the San Diego Chargers, a AFC Championship game. Six tackles for them solo, one interception, took it back six yards, and he defended a pass. 13-17 defeat, an excruciating defeat for that Steelers team that was just one play away from the Super Bowl. Couldn't quite get it done, but Rod Woodson had his only career postseason interception in this game. 2001 is a member of the great Ravens team that won the Super Bowl. He plays at the Tennessee Titans, records 11 tackles, six of them solo in a 24 to 10 victory. Um, you know, jumping on the back of the great game that Ray Lewis had in that game and helping drive the team to victory. Incredible career for Rod Woodson, that much is obvious. And it's especially incredible that he was so successful playing safety and cornerback in his career. But I think it's pretty obvious that he simply doesn't quite stack up to Ray Lewis. There are two big holes in Rod Woodson's career that a lot of these other players simply don't have. One would be postseason success. He wasn't a postseason slouch, but he wasn't a postseason playmaker. And making plays is a big part of who Rod Woodson was. So that definitely has to be a black mark against him. He plays 20 postseason games, has one career interception. Not going to cut it when you compare it to some of these other greats. The other part is franchise loyalty. This is something I didn't mention before, but if you're looking at guys like Ray Lewis and Derek Brooks, who played their whole career with one team, the fact that Rod Woodson did so much team jumping and played for four different teams definitely does have to affect the way you view him. And we'll be mentioning that with some of the future players I'm going to cover. So, when you add in the fact that when Rod Woodson got his one ring, he was piggybacking on Ray Lewis as the primary player of that defense, him being secondary at best, I think it's pretty obvious Ray Lewis is easily higher on the ladder than Rod Woodson. Now, as for Rod Woodson versus Derek Brooks, it's a very tough decision. Ultimately, I think it comes down to Derek Brooks not having tremendous team success in his career versus Rod Woodson not having great postseason individual success in his career. Ultimately, after thinking about it really hard, I gave the slight edge to Rod Woodson simply because he was one of the greatest playmakers in NFL history. I'm not sure what Derek Brooks was the greatest at in his career. Maybe not the greatest reasoning ever, but I had to pick somebody. And ultimately, I decided going with Rod Woodson. You may disagree. I got no problem with that. It's very close. But for the purposes of our comparison, all we need to know is that Ray Lewis is clearly a cut above both of these guys. Stay tuned.